Once we have our sample selected, we actually need to uh, perform an experiment or ultimately we got to do some sort of measurement or data collection. And so let's go ahead and throw up another question up here. What is the purpose of making oops give me a second making a measurement okay so we've already answered like you know uh, what's the purpose of a question? We've already talked about like what characterizes a good sample and why we want a, a good sample. Uh, but what's the purpose of making a measurement? So the purpose of us answering a measure or a purpose of us making a measurement is to have data collect data to support a conclusion or maybe we'll put to make a conclusion with respect to the question. Remember the purpose of our question was to reveal something that is previously unknown and the purpose of making a measurement is to collect this data or this evidence uh, so that we can make a conclusion with respect to our question or basically be able to all this reveal what was previously unknown. All right, so if that's our purpose of our question, we also should probably ask like what characterizes, or if this is the purpose of making a measurement, we should also ask like what characterizes a good measurement. Okay, so let's put this up. Okay, so there, this is actually going to have a two-part answer of like what characterizes, oh no, not a good question, I apologize. A good measurement. Okay, yeah, what characterizes a good measurement? All right, so from this one, two parts. The first one. So we want to say like as closely as possible, uh, it attempts to directly we'll put this as possible. Uh, answer the question. And two, uh, the measurement is free of bias. All right, so let's talk about this just a little bit. So the first one is to, like it attempts to, to, and this should be like as directly as possible, uh, answer the question. And you're like, uh, well, that's obvious. And my it's actually way more complicated than, than it looks. So for example, there are things that are easy to measure. Uh, so if I want to say like, I want to know what's the average weight of uh, members of the football team. All right, that's not hard to do. You put the members of the football team on a scale, right? And the measurement is trying to directly answer this question. What's the weight? Put you on a scale, I can tell you the weight of every individual person. That's great. Um, now, there are things that are much more complicated to answer. To ask like maybe I want to know what is uh, maybe I want to know how successful are people who leave Casper College okay the problem with a question like that is that I don't have a measurement or an instrument that measures success first of all I'm gonna to have to like define what success is and people can argue with that like whether or not that actually is success oftentimes we deem success as money 
um, but it's a poor sin, like single measurement. And so sometimes when we have this question, like if, especially if it's a complicated or more kind of abstract question, what we have to do is we have to take multiple measurements that we're trying to measure it as directly as possible. So maybe for success, I want to say, um, maybe we look at how long you've been employed. And maybe we could say that's part of success. Maybe we could say how much money you're making right now. Uh, maybe we could talk about uh, how expensive your house is, how many cars you have, um, how big your family is. Like, but do those actually directly measure success? And no, so what you got to do is you have to measure things as directly as possible to answer the question. And then what we can do is we can combine a lot of these ideas together and basically try to answer this construct uh, with these questions that we actually can answer. So as directly as possible, we're trying to answer our big question. Sometimes we got to break it down into little questions that we actually can measure, um, but that's what makes a good measurement. All right, this next part is free of bias. And we need to probably like define what bias is. And bias is just uh, this. So the bias is when, when we take our sample and our measurements, they, uh, the answers will over slash under, either or, underestimate estimate the population remember when we take our sample we're trying to get it representative of the population and when we get, take our statistic we're trying to make some approximation of the parameter about the population and if we have bias our statistic is going to over or underestimate whatever the the population parameter uh, is okay and you know, let me put that population parameter. Okay, so there are there are lots of different types of bias. Uh, I'm going to cover some of them, and we can do a little discussion of them. There's lots of other types of biases. Basically, anything that causes this over or underestimation uh, it can be a source of bias. Uh, but these are some common sources. Of bias and we can try to see like whenever we do our experiments we try to set them up so that they are going to be free of bias so let's put this up here as sources of bias okay so uh, in no particular order I'm going to put these up um, we could put them in a different order and I'm just going to put the names up and give you just a short definition of them uh, if you want, there are some other resources uh, that you can get some more in-depth kind of written descriptions about these. Uh, so first one is survivorship. Okay, so the problem with like survivorship uh, bias is that we would be measuring people who only like make it to the end, uh, hence why it's called survivorship. Uh, so if we are looking at, um, so like an example of where we can get survivorship bias in, uh, let's say that, that we're talking about or we're, we're looking at very successful people, so these like Fortune 500 companies and the CEOs of them, and we look at um, why did they make it to the top, and so we look at, at some of their, their habits. Well, the problem when we look at that is we're only looking at the people who actually survived or made it to that point. Uh, another time that this can, can happen, let's say maybe we're looking at the, um, the efficacy of some new cancer treatment, but we only look and measure people who survive after 10 years and we don't take into account anybody else, uh, that's a survivorship. It's just the people who are the last person standing. Okay, another one is called recall. So recall bias happens a lot like in surveys, like you ask people to remember how many times they ate or drank soda in the past week or how many times, you know, that how long they slept. You're asking people to recall uh, how much they, they actually know and the unfortunate thing is humans are actually terrible at having this like really good memory of exactly what happened if you really wanted to know you'd set up an experiment where you measure this as they're going along instead of having people recall and so you see that you know people tend to like overestimate uh, good habits and underestimate bad habits and that's where we get some recall bias okay another source of bias we can get is funding so whenever you look at an experiment, you want to see 
uh, who funded it because sometimes that can slant the results. So like for example, if a new pharmacy company says that you know 95% uh, of people when they take this new miracle painkiller are free of pain in an hour. But you notice that the study that they got it from was from the parent company who actually owns this pharmacy. Well, they have a vested interest in getting results that actually show that their medicine is good. You want to make sure, or now the funding isn't necessarily a problem, but you want to be wary of it um, because if you have alternative motive or you have a conflict of interest, funding can oftentimes show you where some bias is coming in. All right, another one that we can see is like cause and effect. Cause and effect bias. So sometimes we, we conclude that like one, um, oh, so like for, for example, if we are looking at like heart disease and baldness, like we can see that they are connected. Uh, and we could be um, tempted to say that balding causes uh, heart, heart disease or heart attacks. And that's really not what's going on. And we can, so that cause and effect can cause some bias in some of the conclusions that, that we're making. All right, another one is called selection bias. And selection bias is uh, kind of like one of the core ones is self-selection. So let's say that, that you, you're wanting to do this survey and you're asking for volunteers. Well, the problem with volunteers is that you're getting people who are self-selecting themselves out of the survey and people who are selecting themselves into the survey. And so the sample that you're looking at really might not be the representative of the population that you're hoping to be or to get. And so selection can often cause a bias or an over and underestimation of this population parameter. Okay, last one that we're going to talk about is confirmation. Right, and confirmation bias is basically like we have a conclusion that we already know and that we have and we are trying to collect data that already supports that conclusion and so maybe we're only looking at data that actually supports that and we don't include all the data and so that can give us bias as well. Anyhow, th there's a ton of sources of bias and ultimately what we are trying to do is we're trying to stay free of bias so that we are not over or underestimating the population parameter. Because ultimately uh, when we're making this measurement we're trying to reveal the truth and these are things that are confounding the truth or over underestimating some population uh, parameter. Anyhow, so those are some, some of these ideas of why we are making a measurement and what makes a good measurement.